Good morning, everybody. This is Timothy Zalmer in Boquete, Panama for Hotel Central Boquete. Want to start off your day here with a little information about the bugs of Panama. We've got all kinds of cool bugs, and my friend Emily, just up the, the street from the hotel, has got this cool butterfly house. She's an amazing lady, and her passion is growing, propagating all of the most endangered pollinators that are here in Panama. It's a crazy place, so you've got all kinds of bugs, and one odd fact is we have 12 different bumblebees here. I saw a collection down at the flower fair the other day, and I just thought that was super cool. I think bumblebees are neat. You know, I remember growing up around them, but they actually have 12 different kinds of bumblebees. And when it comes to bees, Emily, she's the greatest. The, the butterfly house is amazing, but she works and uses these Africanized bees. She puts them in the far back regions of their most remote farms and they produce just a ton of honey. Now they are dangerous as can be. And you've got to be very careful if you're out in these remote areas. There's so many pollinators here and some of them are in danger and they have bees of so many different kinds that live inside of old rotten trees and Emily pays the farmers that when they're clearing the land to come down and uh, tell her and she will pay them to go out there before they clear the land and remove those incredibly rare bees and then she relocates them in these remote areas around Boquete up, up in the edges of the where the civilization and wilderness touch each other and I think that's pretty cool the uh, the fact is there at the entry of the butterfly house in her gift shop She's got a uh, hive that's inside of uh, like a big chunk of a dead tree that she'd chopped out of the wilderness on the edge of somebody's farm there wanting to clean it up a little bit. And they, they're the coolest thing ever. You can put your hand right on the, the face of that tree and they are stingless bees. They, they can't sting you. They don't, they don't even have stingers. It's, it's just amazing. Well, she, she has this passion and, you know, one time I had uh, this lady in, in, in my hotel staying there. She was just an inc incredible gal working on her uh, first or second PhD attached to the Smithsonian Institute down in uh, Panama City. The Smithsonian's here and uh, she is a super duper bug ex expert and she's studying the nanoscale, the microscopic scale of how the quantum field is able to, without any loss of energy, when do you come to able to pass the energy on the outside of the retina when the light hits the bee's eye and transfer it in a quantum state to the inside where the neural tissue is that, that, that bees are able to see. Well, I thought she was a pretty cool gal when she told me what she does, and I sent her down to meet Emily. And uh, you know, you just, these things happen there at the hotel. We meet these amazing people and try to help them out. Well, the bug thing here is we have these swarms sometimes. Like last night we had a bug swarm it's kind of weird, and that's about the only time we really close the windows and doors at the coffee shop reception area at the hotel. And uh, early in the evening, because it's like, when I was back in Montana, they would have these blooms, and it was a great time to go trout fishing, because the trout would get really aggressive about eating all these big bug blooms and the bug blooms here 
are just almost, almost overwhelming. We might have one day. Hola, amigo, que tal? Como esta? And uh, we had one of these last night where my wife, she told me, go run around, turn off all the outside lights and the kitchen light because they're, they're being drawn in. And she went around sweeping up the porches covered up with these crazy little bugs. They're not biting bugs or nothing, but just swarming. Bella, let me close the door quick. I was out there outside the house. So we have these weird blooms and there's a lot of bugs. You know, these scorpions I told you about before, always bang out your shoes every single time you put them on. You know, uh, it's a problem, you got bugs here. But you know the cool bugs too, we have the, the well the other day I put it on my, on, uh, on my Facebook page for the hotel, Hotel Central Boquete, and on the Instagram feed that we do, that's the same name too, Hotel Central Boquete, of the giant. We had a gal come bellering in, there's a sick bird or something trying to get in trying to get in into the to the reception area coffee area coffee shop and uh, come on out here so I come out of my wife's office and and uh, went out there and sure enough I'd never seen this this is the biggest dang bug I've ever seen I mean this thing is probably about a foot across uh, toes to stern hola buen dia mira ese perro lindo Oh my God, that's the prettiest dog ever. Look at that cute guy. <laughs> Ese perro si es lindo. <laughs> De nada. Oh, that is a cute dog. Oh, he's got a hurt foot. Oh, that's too bad. Um, but this giant moth was flapping around for some reason around the oh, Now he's a, he's a watchdog. Now he's in the house. <laughs> That's funny. Um, so that this giant, they call him the giant. He's, I mean, he's amazing, gigantic moth right here in town. I've never seen anything like it. Well, the other kind of bugs we see that are pretty cool is uh, we get a lot of walking leaves that um, they look just like a little green leaf. And they fly, and they have this weird thing they do that they'll they'll tremble as if they're a leaf, kind of wiggling back and forth in the breeze. That's their camouflage method, I guess. And I think that's really cool, really, really cool. There's so many pollinators here, and some of them are in danger. Um, the other thing, you know, we're really famous for is this most, but they call it the most beautiful butterfly in the world. And that's the blue morpho butterflies. And uh, there's like on the east side of town, up in the, some of the Peterson farms, they got a place, or, place up there that you can go up there and find them. They're kind of a giant butterfly, uh, about as big as your hand at least. And they're kind of like an owl's eye, where it, it, it'll sit on the side of a tree and it's got like, when the leaves are, or when its wings are closed tight, it's, uh, it looks like a giant eye staring at you. That's kind of weird. But the, the blue morpho, this is a very magical, special, well, it's like incredible butterfly. And it's a blue metallic. The, uh, the blue morpho, I like seeing them. We had one trying to get in the hotel a couple months ago, coming through town, and uh, so I was jumping up and down showing everybody, and, and that's pretty cool. Up north on the hiking trails, you see them sometimes, but you gotta, you know, you can't always see the, uh, the shiny metal blue. Uh, hey, primo, como esta? Muy bien. So it's a, oh look here, happy chickens, right here, look at that.
You can look up my video. Happy chickens and hungry dogs. What is going on with the racket pre-dawn? Yeah, you don't need an alarm clock here. We got lots of happy chickens and hungry dogs. And you know these chickens are important. See this one right here? Really, really scrawny. Chickens. You might notice everybody's got chickens running around, crossing the road and all that kind of joke, but they buy a bucket of baby chicks and a little bag of that stuff, you know, the gris, that they need for their craw so they can digest. And uh, it's pretty common. Here's another one right here on the road. There's two of them, look. But see what they're doing? They're picking up the bugs from that bloom last night. And it seems like it, it works pretty good because they'll go around, you know, like all the leaves or whatever that might be on the ground or the grass clippings if you've been clipping. And they clean it up. They turn it over and they pick up the bugs and then they produce eggs. So if you like to have chickens, all you have to do is just, you know, have a yard where, or you just let them out in the street like everybody else here, and uh, they'll eat up the bugs. Now, everybody gets all uptight about malaria, dengue, chagas, and all that, and we're blessed that we really don't have that here in Boquete. You go up north here to Bocas del Toro, and you need to go to the storm buy you a couple three cans of uh off off -F. and uh look at this guy he's going up the top of the volcano <laughs> that's the technicians right there that work with my brother-in-law they go up to the summit is something's broke on the uh, they have all kind of tv towers and satellite dishes and and all that and my brother-in-law he built most of those He's the one I send people up with uh, in his cool four-wheel drive, just creeps up there, doesn't bounce you around so bad. So we're talking about biting bugs in Boquete. Now, I'll be honest with you, I it, bugs like me for some reason, and I, you know, I get bit and I put, I carry this little steroid cream, like cortisone cream, just the one percent, and I'll put that on my bites and I, and it goes away and uh that works pretty good hola amigo dile buen dia estamos grabando <laughs> hey tu hombre ganó huh that's it that's the new president there in his poster yeah está bueno eh okay yeah he voted for nito he's the new president coming in oh and more happy chickens and hungry dogs here and uh you got to put off on sometimes. If you're in a coffee farm, they got coffee flies that will bite you. They swell a little bit where the bite is. Hold on, Wendy. And it hurts and it'll bleed a little bit even. I had a buddy who was living in a coffee farm place where the, he had rented a house and he had coffee all around him. That's, I don't know. I don't think that's such a good idea because Every time I went there, I was getting bit up by coffee fleas, or flies, or whatever they call them. But coffee, for some reason, has these biting bugs, and uh, I'm not up for that. So you go on a coffee tour. We got the most amazing coffee in the world grown right here, and that's and that's the story about coffee flies, and and. Dug on it, probably that's the worst bite I've had is the coffee fly bite. But they got these bichos and cheat rays, and the bichos are like what we call no seams back in the States. And those little stinkers will get me once in a while in the coffee shop just after dawn when maybe it's rained and now it's heating up and you know going from chilly to, to warm. And uh, I hate that, you know, you can't even hardly tell where they bit you. 
So once in a while, I'll throw a little off on my arms, my neck, and my head, and that works pretty good. And the chi trays, my wife hates those, and she's from here, and they're like a giant mosquito. About a, they can get up to an inch across. They look like a mosquito that, that got on steroids or something, got giant. And uh, we'll kill those before we go to sleep. You'll see them. Now, the other thing that's pretty cool, they've got these weird shiny beetles with all kinds of cool colors, like metal colors. And we just had a little bloom here the last week. And they got giant pinchers in the front. And, and they're just really cool. They fly, but not too much. And they're big. I mean, they're, you know, about an inch and a half long. And they're just real pretty. I think they're real pretty. The, uh, what other kind of bugs do we have here? The, uh, oh, the ants. Let's talk about ants for a second. That's really important. The ant problem here. Buena. Oh, my goose got a cocker. Hey, cocker spaniel. We got a cocker, yeah. The ants, you got to know about the ants before you move here because once in a while we'll have some fire ants come onto the property and I immediately spray for them. They're, uh, they're not deadly, they just make you want to die. Because uh, like one time my mama got stung by these little, little stinkers and my little baby uh, niece, back then she was just a little tiny thing stepped off the curb they're in texas actually and they get up on you like she was playing in the grass my mom didn't even notice they were just on the side of my brother's house and doggone it they they have this thing where they release some sort of hormone a pheromone and uh you got you know four or five ten or twenty of them on you and then bam all at one time they bite you at the exact same time and it hurts yeah i was fixing something on the far side of the fence by the hotel in the, the neighbor's lot. I had a sign tied up there, you know, for grand opening or whatever. And oh my God, they got me. They got on my legs. I wasn't looking at the ground. And if you stop on, on dirt ground, always look down where you're standing. See if you got those uh, fire ants. They're little tiny guys, but they're bad boys. They, uh, They'll get on you and then release this pheromone and then kabam, they'll all bite you at the same darn time. And uh, you know, sometimes people gotta go to the clinic, get a shot, calm it down. Um, hey, I had a guy who's a famous chef and uh, computer programmer, he comes stays here. He's uh, building a farm just east of Bocchetti and he teaches the chefs here in town how to use his uh, fancy uh, organic produce, right? Well, James shows up and he's been working at the farm and his hands were swollen like baseball mitts. And uh, I, I took him down to the little clinic real quick. They give him antibiotics, steroid shot. So you can't monkey around with this because if your hands swell that big, they could strangulate and die. You know, like get gangrene and lose your hands. So I, yeah, he kind of scared me a couple months ago. So you got the fire ants. Yeah, they got me once in the hotel, so I'm real vigilant to not let stuff like that come. Now, the other kind of ant that kind of drives me crazy is these ants called cutters. They, all night long, they're working. They, they carry off and cut off little pieces of your most beautiful flowers. And I mean, they can carry your garden away in three days. And there are a line of them where they'll cut a perfect little highway in the grass, right down to the dirt, and every one of them will be carrying a piece of your most beautiful flower on their back, pretty good sized chunk. And what they're doing, here we are at the hotel, look at there, there's a pretty spot. That's Rainbow Ridge up there, where the backlit cross is, right up there. It's a pretty spot here, sun's coming up. But these damn cutter ants, they, you got some beautiful flowers. They like the flowers because what they do is they're mushroom farmers. 
and what they what they do is they cut up these flowers, run them in a hole where they got this nest where they they plant the mushroom seeds on top of the flowers. They grow these little miniature mushrooms down inside their, their nest. And you can't believe this, then they feed their babies. Their babies eat the mushrooms that they grow on your darn flowers. So yeah, yeah. they got these little granules that's pretty safe to use. You just drop them on their little line. They carry it back and you might have to do two or three treatments, but that's a way to handle that. You can uh, take care of the cutters. So I think that's about it about my bug stories. And uh, oh, here's a cool thing. See this bird right over here up on the wire? They're the most amazing bug hunters. They can fly straight up and eat these bugs. We'll have bugs eating other bugs. They'll be like a little cloud of little bitty bugs and then bigger bugs eating those bugs. And then these guys look for the big bugs that come in and they can fly straight up, grab one of them big bugs and come right straight down. They're just amazing flowers, uh, flyers. Uh, the other weird thing about them, yeah, this is hard to believe, but they have got one of the most incredible nesting dances I've seen here. This, this tree here by my hammocks right, right up here, you, they do a cool thing where like the male or the female comes back with some little twigs or a little piece of grass or something. They're building this nest. And the one is singing just the most beautiful song when they're nesting. It's just amazing. But the one who comes with the stuff to build the nest, they fly up in the air in like a helix, like it's a dance that they're doing, spinning straight up to kind of, you know, they're just so proud about building this wonderful new nest for their babies. And, uh, and then they put it in there and then the other one takes off and, and then they switch places singing. And the funny part is, is they're the most amazing uh, singing and dancing nest building crew. There he goes, right there. Hey. Hola, amigo. Yeah. And that, it's just amazing how they build this nest because uh, they have got to be the worst nest builders of all. Because, I mean, these guys, their nest is like it's terrible engineering. It's it, the one last year. It fell out on the ground like 10, 20 times and they never gave up. They just kept building it, but it's terrible nest. But yeah, we had one of their nests here. That's pretty cool last year. So they're kind of fun, but they eat the bugs. Oh my gosh. They're some of the greatest experts. The other thing we have here is a, um, a bird they call the tropical mockingbird. They're kind of, they look like a kingfisher, a gray bird, a little bit long legged. And when I was building the hotel, um, I'd come down here early, get the coffee started for all the contractors come in. And uh, we didn't have doors and windows and stuff put in yet. And so all the bugs would come in and these uh, kingfishers that come in and uh, kind of like Dr. Doolittle, I could you know point out where all the big bugs were and they would follow me through the hotel as I was kind of checking to see what's going on. And uh, so when the hotel opened, everybody thought I was like Dr. Doolittle except I don't know, I just kind of made buddies with those birds and would point out to them, you know, where the big bugs were that I'd seen. And man, they they kind of like that. They come around. So yeah, the gray ones, they're uh, they're real good. They'll come into your house. We have these little uh, no-tail uh, sparrows, like English sparrows, but they just don't have tails. Some of them have tails, well, like short tails. And they're real good too for cleaning up the bugs. The other bugs I see all the time is these uh, sweet bees. Sweet bees. They, they, I have a hummingbird feeder here at the hotel just full of hummingbirds night and day. And uh, these little sweet sugar bees, they're little tiny things. They don't bite nobody, but they'll get into that hole and actually drown themselves. So that's a little bit weird. And another one that looks just like them, it scares the tourists all the time is this black flying ant. It's, it's a weird one and they're really attracted to people with perfumey type stuff on. They, uh, they're real bad about coming around people, but they don't bite you. They just, they just scare the tourists. So I always, always explain you know, which ones they are because you don't really have to kill them. So I guess that's it for my bugs.
the Battle of the Bugs of uh, Panama. Well, this is Tim Zelmer at Hotel Central Boquete. Hoping you have a great day. Thank you all for being here. Bye-bye.